Who is the Christ? Who is Jesus Christ? As far as you can tell, the man Jesus of Nazareth lived and preached in the midst of the Roman Empire in the area around Palestine some 2,000 years ago. He defied the law of God that bound his people, curing on the Sabbath often and casting out devils from suffering people on the seventh day set aside for rest and prayer. He was known to have a great following and was killed by, for, by the authorities out of fear of rebellion. But who has Christ become? Jesus Christ has become the very image of God to over two billion human beings on the planet Earth. It is he who has become that which we love, worship, and emulate. It is the Christ, the fusion of God, human and God, that is spoken of in the Gospels, the Epistles, the Revelations, and is predicted in the Hebrew Bible, as well as acknowledged in the Holy Quran. It is the Son of Man who came to show us all the way to overcometh the satanic snares of the world. What does this overcoming entail? Liberation. Liberation. From the snares of the devil, from the snares of the world, from the snares of our flesh, and from the tendency of the spirit to separate us from our bodies and from one another, judging and condemning, becoming vain, acting holier than thou, looking down on others as the scribes and the Pharisees. We must be free. And Jesus Christ, the first to triumph over death, shows us the path to freedom. The key to freedom is finding the unity in all seven spirits of God. That's Revelation 3, 1 and 4, 5. All the seven spirits of ourselves. This harkens back to Isaiah the prophet, who described the seven spirits of God, as well as the rod out of the stem of Jesse, Isaiah 11, 1 through 4. You may think of the spine as the rod. You may think of the seven spirits as the seven chakras. And in fact, in a certain way, Revelation's talking to those churches, is talking to each of the chakras in the total spiritual um, becoming of the person reading or writing it. The le this language finds echoes in verses of the Revelations, connecting the last book of the Christian Bible with the old Hebrew Bible, particularly the prophet Isaiah. Just as in the later Revelations, Isaiah's musing, musings on the rod and the seven spirits of God conclude with the unity of opposites. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall die down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Isaiah 11.6 The child predicted by the prophet to lead them is none other than the man-child of the twelfth chapter of the Revelations, the Jesus, son of Mary. Christ is the sign of unity of self. The unity of self, spirit, goddess, body, the bride of the spirit, the self and the imitation of Christ, and yes, even the devil can be broken of his desire to destroy us and work for us in achieving the unity of God. That that spirit of rebellion, that spirit of questioning, all the things that a lot of traditional Christian churches are saying, oh, never do this, that's devilish. Maybe that is a devilish thing, but that devil being brought in with everything else in you in harmony is, is like is like Revelations 2.28, when you, if you hold on and do the work of God to the end and keep his name and keep yourself and keep your, you'll rule the nations and you'll be given the morning star, which originally was something in the sky people looked at for years and figured out something out about the whole of the, of the stars. So it was kind of a Promethean um, gift of knowledge that eventually becomes symbol both of Christ and the devil in Revelation. There's a lot here and certainly... Come to continue to talk to us, and we will give you our thought of it. You, you definitely, please feel free to come up with all your own thoughts about it as we continue this discussion. It is for each of us to discover the seven spirits of God in ourselves. Christ is the sign of unity of opposites, of seemingly irreconcilable enemies, the sign of universal forgiveness and reconciliation. God, long an enemy to the goddess earth, distrustful of her influence over our bodies and souls, comes to love her, and she makes the choice to support God, favoring the image of goddess that finds fulfillment in service rather than in defiance of God. Mother Mary resisting the dragon in his whore of Babylon, and the earth opening her mouth to swallow the flood unleashed by the dragon and help the woman. Revelations 12.16 The earth blesses the woman, 
the mother of Jesus, the mother of us all. Christhood is the path to healing, not only the animosity between God and goddess, but between God and Satan. Twice in, Re in the Revelations, near the beginning and in the final chapter, we see the term morning star. This is what I, is in there. I, I, I started ad-libbing, but this is where it is explained. This is a term used by prophet Isaiah to describe Lucifer, the son of the morning, Isaiah 14, 12. The promise of Christ is the integration of all aspects of ourselves, our spirit, our bodies, even our rebellion and urge to question and test the truth. The rebellion and questioning is embodied in the image of the devil. Let us look at the two key mentions of the morning star in the Revelations. The first mentioning of the morning star is preceded by the exhortation as Christ, to overcometh. And he that overcometh and keepeth my words until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and the vessels of a potter they shall be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. It's Revelation 2, 26-28. After all the drama of the revelations has unfolded and the visions have come to an end, an allegory for the crisis of faith and sanity in the self and in the world that can lead through Christ to great victory, to overcoming all obstacles, the morning star is mentioned again. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, and, 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 and that they, may, they might have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these angels, these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, and the bring bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and whoever, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. From the stem of Jesse, David's forefather, has come the rod of iron. Note that unity is, both, is part of both passages. The gateway of Christ is to love beyond the law and forgive those who have failed to live up to the, God's old stern commands. Jesus forgives them so much loves them so much that he dies for them. The gateway of Christ is the way of a man who would lay down his life for his friends, even unto crucifixion, the most painful and shameful way to die in biblical times. And making his last first and his first last, serving all, that man or woman becomes powerful enough to rule the nations. With a rod of iron that comes from the tongue of the believers slain in the Christ, speaking his words in prophecy. See this uh, Isaiah 11.4 answered by Revelation 19.15. The gateway, this gateway enables us to become a, tru a truly whole human being, to become ourselves in the highest sense. No longer are we kept apart from ourselves. No longer are our bodies and spirit trapped in separate prisons. No longer is the devil within us a rage of defiance against the unity of spirit and body. The devilishness in us has been brought to heal, placed in our service. Uh, Christ, embodying all of humanness, car carried the weight of sin as a cross upon his back to which he was nailed till he died. He went down into hell and conquered it. Then he rose as each of us rises in his name. The Christ integrates all parts of us into one self. His love, his compassion must emerge in each of us in order to balance the spirit and body and integrate our devilish side back into our whole self. And in Christ, that self serves the unified community of God. For, for the All-Faith Church of Liberation, it is not Christ's death on the cross, but his resurrection and his becoming one with all of us that is the good news of the gospel and the revelations. He embraced the cross, death, humiliation, abandonment, and betrayal. But now that he has done all that, it is, uh, it is up to us to pick up the cross where he laid it down. It is up to us to suffer and celebrate through feast and famine our lives in this world. Empowered by the risen Christ, we, each of us, are called to be his brothers and sisters, testifying his truth to all the nations. For we have overcome the powers and principalities who work in the, in the world, the enticements of Babylon. We have done it by loving our enemy till the enemy is overcome, the enemy within, the enemy outside. We do this in Christ by loving God with all our hearts, all our souls, and all our minds, and to love our neighbors as we would love ourselves. For in loving each other in God's name, we create a community strong enough to defeat any enemy.